tonight is to kind of explain how this book came to be. And uh, Kim and I thank Barbara Kerr and the staff here at the library for inviting us here to speak about our book, Dead in Good Company. And we're happy to have two of our contributors, Dee Morris and Paul, Paul Roberts, both from Medford, here with us. It's particularly gratifying for me to have this event at my hometown library. I lived in Medford all of my 71 years. I know you don't believe that I could be 71. <laughs> but I am. And I would never have thought that I'd be part of a celebration such as this. And this library is certainly one piece of the puzzle that led ultimately to this book. When I was in the fifth or sixth grade at the Hancock School in South Medford, I got my first library card. On my first visit here, once I had my card, I took out the book, The Wonderful Flight to the Mushroom Planet by Eleanor Cameron. Now this book was published in 1954. It was a book about a couple of kids my age visiting another planet. That was exciting to me. Actually, that possibility is still exciting to me. After reading a few chapters, that light went off in my head. I realized that this reading thing was amazing. It was a revelation. My love of reading began with that book and led me to the book business, which two years ago led to this book. If this library hadn't had this exciting book on hand for me to take out on my first very library card, perhaps all of us would be somewhere else tonight, watching the Celtics or something. <laughs> Sometimes the most important events in our lives turn on very small beginnings. And I have to say, since this book was published in 1954 and is still available today, this copy came from Amazon a couple of weeks ago, I must have had pretty good taste in literature way back then. Not many books published in 1954 are still available to order today. And I checked outside about an hour ago, and you can get this book now. Take out your library card on the way out and take it and give it to a kid 12 or 13 years old, and I guarantee you they'll enjoy it. So fast forward to the year 2000. I went to the author of Bentley University professor Pierce Butler's house in Waltham for him to sign some of his new novel, A Riddle of Stars, for me. Pierce is one of the contributors to our book. I would put autograph copy stickers on the books for my accounts, the Mass General, Gift Shop, Brigham and Women's, the Leahy Clinic, Mount Auburn Hospital, etc. When I arrived at Pierce's house, he said that he thought he was going to miss me because he'd been at Mount Auburn Cemetery bird watching. John, do you do that, he asked. I told him that I had heard about Mount Auburn Cemetery now and then through the years, but always thought a cemetery is a cemetery, so I never went there. So he said, oh no. Mount Auburn Cemetery is not like other cemeteries. You'd like it. And I think you'd like bird watching too. The following Sunday morning, I did go to that Mount Auburn Cemetery and was utterly impressed. Pierce was correct. From that first visit, I began visiting the cemetery several times a week, and that led to bird watching and photographing the birds and other wildlife present there. Pierce's remark was another piece of the puzzle that led to this book. And since his remark led me to Mount Auburn a few days later, later, it is the significant piece of the puzzle. Really, it's Pierce Butler of Bentley University that brings you here tonight, not Kim and me. In 2010, 10 years after my first visit to the cemetery, I began thinking of the possibility of a book of photographs of the wildlife of the cemetery. Being in the book business and having many authors as friends, you wonder if maybe there is a book in you. It goes with the territory, so to speak. I ran the idea by my New York nonfiction literary agent friend, Linda Connor. She told me that books of photographs are difficult to sell to publishers and that I should try to come up with some other idea to go along with that. Soon after, I was driving by Bigelow Chapel. I actually slapped myself on the head. I have many author friends, and they all know and have high regard for Mount Auburn. What about a book of essays from these authors, along with photographs from myself and other photographers that I'd come to know at Mount Auburn? The more I thought about this idea, the more I thought it had merit. I soon decided to speak to the president and CEO of the cemetery, David Barnett, about the idea. I felt that he would have to like it for me to continue. On Saturday morning, August 14th of 2010, after photographing a northern water thrush at Auburn Lake, at Mount Auburn Cemetery, a lifebird for me, and the bird is in the audience will know what a lifebird is. 
but I uh, had tried three times to photograph that bird that morning and finally had a good opportunity with it. And after finishing that, I was driving out, and as I was driving out, David Barnett, the CEO, president of the cemetery, was walking into the cemetery. And uh, he came over to me and he said, John, I know you've emailed me about getting together. Do you have some time now? Uh, so I, of course, did, and we sat down at a bench next to the offices, and I told him about the idea. And he said he loved the idea. He said, many books have been written about Mount Auburn Cemetery, but they were all academic in nature, about the history, the architecture, the horticulture, all subjects for academics. He said, but your book would be the first book for the personal reasons, for people who came here for personal reasons, not business reasons, not professional reasons. He said, if you keep up with this idea, if you reach this vision, uh, this would be a welcome addition to Mount Auburn literature. As I said, that meeting with David and Barnett was in 2010, and I began speaking to my author friends thereafter, who all loved the idea and were happy to contribute. Soon after, in 2011, I met Kim Nagy at the cemetery. We became friends, and I quickly realized that she would be the perfect partner in this endeavor. She has can-do spirit, as we used to say in my Navy days. I didn't think I could do this alone. I didn't want to do it alone. So I asked her to join me. <coughs> she believed in the idea and came aboard. At that point, we didn't have a working title for the book. Thanks to Kim, we chose Dead in Good Company as the title. And now I'll let Kim tell you about that.